So a lot of my coaching has to do with working with teachers, administrators, and schools on building pedagogical capacity, both with and without technology. But as of late, a lot of that work has been really transitioning, uh, helping schools transition to blended learning environments. And I think it's really important to make the distinction. You know, a lot of times when we think, well, whether we integrate a tool like Kahoot, Mentimeter, Quizzes, uh, Quiznetic, or whatever it is, that as part of our, you know, instructional component, that that's actually blended learning. And look at it this way. Instruction is what the teacher does. Learning is what the kids do. How do we transfer that power and time more to the learner? So as we think about the difference between blended instruction and blended learning, blended instruction is what the teacher does with technology. Blended learning is what the kids do with it to control path, pace, and place when learning. And it really is a big difference. You know, I will go through during presentations and I'll try to model a lesson and I'll get people talking. I might review prior learning, check for understanding or close. And then what I'll do is after I have them talk, I'll integrate a tool, um, whether it could be Poll Everywhere, Poplet, Padlet, whatever. So then they respond and that's great. And then after they do that, I'm like, well, listen, what I did, that was not blended learning. You didn't have control of a path, pace, and place. You know, that was part of the instructional component. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. You know, we really want to use uh, technology to improve instruction with the main goal that it sets up enhanced learning opportunities for our kids. So when we think about blended learning environments, you know, do kids have that control? Are they owning it? Are they empowered? Uh, through path, pace, and place? Are we leveraging uh, flexible learning spaces to support flexible learning? So if you really want to determine whether or not it is a, a blended learning experience, ask yourself this. Is there differentiated instruction and pacing? Uh, are the activities personalized to the learner's interest? Have you aligned virtual and classroom instruction? Is there a balance between virtual and classroom instruction? Is the activity, the task, actually focused on the learner? Uh, are they, is it adaptable? Is it authentic? And how does it align with a future-focused curriculum and assessment? You know, some of the best cases of blended learning that I see uh, in schools deal with choice boards, uh, playlists, and station rotation model. Uh, middle school to high school, looking at the flipped classroom. But in either case, we have to be cognizant of you know, what is it that our kids are actually doing. If it's still mostly a passive learning experience and a part of direct instruction or even a high effect instructional strategy, and that's the key. You know, it could be part of a high effect instructional strategy. We want that. But where does that shift of power occur? What are the kids doing with technology that they couldn't do without it? So, you know, I, I think it's important that we make this distinction and we really move towards, when appropriate, uh, creating blended learning experiences for our kids. So in, in essence, blended instruction is great. And um, in my role as a coach, when I'm in schools, a lot of what I see is blended instruction. And that's a great foundation to begin to reflect and think about, well, where do we want our kids to be? You know, how is student work changing? How is uh, scaffolding of questions and tasks changing? How is assessment changing? How is feedback changing? Are we maximizing the time that we have with our kids? You know, in some of the best blended learning uh, environments that I see, you know, kids are basically learning independence. They're self-managing. They might be using an adaptive learning tool uh, that, you know, meets their specific needs, but they also might be collaborating all on an interactive whiteboard. But the key aspect of blended learning is how it frees up that time for the teacher, where that teacher can then work with, whether it's one student or just a handful of students, really focusing on closing those gaps, helping them develop those competencies and helping really prepare them for success. So as you think about your work, again, this is not a negative if it is blended instruction, but just ask yourself, if it is, what steps will you take or should you take to move towards blended learning? Love to hear your thoughts and ideas on Twitter. Thanks for listening, everybody.